bodybuilding has always been full of talent since its inception. We have seen aesthetic beasts and mega mass monsters alike. Some of them boast big quads, while others are blessed with monster backs like Dorian Yates and Ronnie Coleman. Some have arguably the best biceps in bodybuilding such as Arnold Lee Priest and Roly Winkler. However, there is one bodybuilder who also had the best biceps of his era, yet fewer people know of this talent. He is known as Boyer Co, aka the Thinking Bodybuilder. Boyer Co has a very long competition history and is best known for his dominance in the sport for more than four decades. I've competed for a long time. I really wasn't that much into competition. I more or less looked at bodybuilding competition as just a way to measure my progress. Right. And it really wasn't even so matter about what the judges gave me because quite honestly, I never had a whole lot of respect for the judges. He started competing in 1962 when he was just a teenager and continued competing until 1995 in Mr. Olympia. He possessed a very artistic physique and his front double bicep pose was on another level. Boyer Co, a former professional bodybuilder renowned for his dominance in the sport during the 1970s and 1980s, competed alongside notable figures such as Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sergio Oliva, Mike Menzer and Frank Zane. Born on August 15, 1946 in Lake Charles, Louisiana, Boyer Co. began training at the Lake Charles Gym at the age of 14, becoming its inaugural member. At 15, he aspired to become Mr. America, a goal he eventually achieved. While attending college in Lafayette, Louisiana, he trained and later worked at Red Laryl's Gym, where he honed his posing routine under Red's tutelage. After 14 years at Red's Gym, Co. opened his own gym in New Orleans, known as the Thinking Bodybuilder. Boyer Co. amassed an impressive record, winning seven Mr. World titles, four Mr. Universe titles, and the 1969 Mr. America crown. He was recognized for his intellectual approach to bodybuilding, studying anatomy, and continuously seeking innovative training methods. Collaborating with Arthur Jones, renowned for guiding Casey Vieta through the Colorado experiment. He is able to do 10 repetitions, if that's the guide number, with the ask for 50%. Then the machine will take note of that. The following workout, when he comes back, it will increase his resistance. It'll still be 50% of his one-time maximum, but it'll be a higher force level by about 4%. Well, then with a higher weight, he won't be able to do as many. He'll get maybe eight repetitions with that. Co experimented with different training styles. Unlike Mensa and Vieta, he found that their approach did not suit him due to what he perceived as lesser genetic potential. Co was skeptical of advanced training principles that imposed excessive stress on the body, aligning more with Steve Reeves's philosophy of complete range of motion and avoiding forced partial reps beyond failure to preserve joint health. Actually, if you want to be successful at it, uh, it doesn't, you know, go in the fact that the more time you spend in the gym, the better you'll be. You know, most people assume that if a little training you know, makes a tremendous change in the body, then a lot of training or more training will improve you that much more, and that's not necessarily so at all. There is a lot involved in the preparation for a physique contest, but the training to provide the stimulus for muscle growth, which is uh, a, a very important part of it, but it's still a very small part of it. There's a lot of other aspects involved as well. Co initiated his workout routines by focusing on core exercises, believing it was crucial to warm up the body and mentally prepare for the upcoming session. Additionally, he prioritized training his abdominals first, considering them a weak area that required extra attention. 
While his workout routines varied, Co consistently emphasized the importance of thorough warm-ups, attributing his lengthy career and absence of injuries to this practice. Referring to his training approach as work capacity training, Co adapted principles from Mike Mensa's high intensity training, HIT, emphasizing pyramid sets and shorter rest periods. He executed his repetitions deliberately, reducing weight by 5 lbs after reaching failure on each set. Regarding nutrition, Co adhered to a straightforward diet reminiscent of the golden era of bodybuilding high protein, high fat, and low carbohydrates. Uh, but I did cut back on the, the volume of food that I ate uh, versus what I did last year. I was probably averaging, uh, right up until the, the contest here, probably about 3,500 to 4,000 calories a day. And last year I was eating about 5,000 calories a day. His primary protein sources included raw eggs, beef, fish, chicken, and pork. During competition preparation, he reduced carbohydrate intake to enhance his stage conditioning. In contrast, during the off-season, Co increased carbohydrate consumption to support intensified training and muscle growth. Throughout his distinguished career, Boya Co achieved remarkable success in various bodybuilding competitions. Among his numerous victories are the 1965 Mr. Texas First, 1965 Mr. Dallas first, 1969 Mr. America first, and the 1972 NABBA Mr. Universe Pro second in the under five nine inches category. In 1981, Boyer showcased his dominance by clinching first place in several prestigious events, including the World Invitational Cup, Grand Prix Belgium, Grand Prix Wales, and Grand Prix World securing seven Grand Prix titles in that year alone. His winning streak extended into 1982, with a notable triumph at the Grand Prix Montreal. Consistently a formidable contender for the Mr. Olympia title, Boyer remained competitive even in the later stages of his career, finishing third in the 1994 Mr. Olympia and tenth in the 1995 Mr. Olympia. Despite his unique muscle bellies, Boyer Coe's exceptional biceps, distinguished by a visible split between the two heads, remained a standout feature throughout his extraordinary journey in bodybuilding. Boyer Coe drew inspiration from notable figures in bodybuilding such as Bill Pearl and Sergio Oliva. I mean, the contest was never the motivating factor for me to get in shape. I was just always curious as to how far I could push myself. I'm fairly self-motivated, so I just wanted to see how good, from all personal satisfaction. I, I didn't care if there was physique contest or not, I still trained weights just to, for my own satisfaction. It's not, I'm not doing this, put it this way, I'm not doing this for any kind of approval. I learned a long time ago, the only person I try to impress is myself.